Hey, welcome to Coffee and Tools. Boy, those aliens, they, uh, they just keep running around here blowing stuff up. I don't know. This week, we want to talk about board and batten. Uh, there is a lot of different uh, board and batten uh, type uh, work that goes on out there in the big world. So this may or may not help you. If it does, that's great. If it doesn't help you, sorry about that, because uh, I looked all over the internet and I really couldn't find the specific board and batten uh, answers or work that I was uh, involved with here. I'm repairing board and batten work all over a large house uh, this past week. One of the reasons why I've been tied up so much. Been doing a lot of work around the house, as they say. Uh, this is the board, and of course, uh, this here would be the batten. And the board itself is virtually, they would call it a 1x12. Now, this board right here, I'll show it to you. It's Western Red Cedar, and it's rough on one side. And the rough side is what weathers better, so they use the rough side as being the uh, face or surface of the board when you're mounting these up. And the other thing you need to know about is when you're nailing these in, if you have a smooth side like this, up against like smooth 2x4s or 2x6, 2x8, whatever you're running against, the smooth side is going to go up a lot smoother and better anyway. So anyways, the rough side is your decorative, but it's, a, it's the weatherized side of the board. It'll handle weatherizing uh, better than the plain side. That's the opposite of what most of us would think, but that's why the rough side is out like this. Anyways, uh, like I said, this is a one by 12. Well, if you actually measure it uh, this way, it'll actually measure about 11 and a quarter. Thickness wise, it'll actually, actual measurement will be three quarters of an inch thick for this particular uh, project or this particular house. And the way they nail these in, because of the 12 inch, and you know yourself, studying, on a new house, old house, whatever, it's on 16 inch centers. So that means you can't really nail this stuff in to every stud that's along the wall. So what's done is the top is nailed in, the bottom is nailed in, and then battens are run. I'll show you that. The batten is run. Now you're leaving a gap. And the reason for that, of course, is this stuff is going to swell and shrink and swell and shrink. So generally they're going to, you're going to find most contractors that install this are going to leave somewhere between a quarter and about a half inch gap on each side of these. That brings it up to, you know, uh, a problem because when the batten is installed, the batten has to be on both sides, obviously, to close up the bat, you know, to close it up. Now, the secret to really doing this right is to come in towards the center, not on the center, but towards the center on each side and stagger your nails or screws or whatever fastener you're using and on an angle, shoot to hit each of the boards from the batten. And we'll also look at, I guess I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys, time to share, I'm gonna show you guys a repair area I did because the only thing that was wrong, uh, particularly with this house, being about 30 years old, was the bottoms were rotten. And again, I'll just mention that before we jump out there, but the bottom should be sealed or dipped or painted, sealed, you know, sealed up nice when each one is installed. Now, the contractors are probably in a hurry. Whether that happens or not, I don't know. But the tops and the bottom should be sealed before it's nailed up. That'll help prevent rot. And like I said, what I'm going to look at and show you the repairs, but the house is it's 30 years old. So it's done a really good job. Now, this is obviously, this is a new board. Uh, let's take a look at an old board. I'll show you an old board. So this, this is an old board uh, chunked off of uh, the house and you can see it's still like brand new. It's western red cedar. It rots very slowly. It really weathers well. And considering this particular board, I had to cut some of it out because of rot problems towards the bottom. But because of it, uh, the, the condition it's in, you can see to be 30 years old, it's in wonderful shape. It's still strong. This is three quarters of an inch thick lumber. Uh, compare that with vinyl siding or something flimsy, this stuff is solid. So it's actually a really good material. A board and batten job done right uh, prior, apparently can last, I guess we'll call it a lifetime or you'd probably get easily 50 years or better out of it because this is 30 years old and look the condition the board is in. It's, it's really, really good actually. But I did have some repairs. So let's go look at the repairs and I'll show you what I was up to. This one here, for example, uh, 
it was a large knot and it fell out of course it looked terrible on this uh, siding so what I had to do here was actually cut through made a square piece glued it in and actually used reused one of the old pieces I'm trying to recycle what cedar I can uh, recapture because like I sh showed you earlier some of the uh, board and batten is in really good condition it's really the bottom that has all the damage so uh, what I did here was I just cut this off and glued a new piece in using of course a weather seal type glue that's almost as well it's as tough as the tougher than the board actually and again western red cedar is kind of soft so there's another problem that I uh, can't show you here but I'll show it to you in the shop that happens when you nail this in when you nail it in oh there's my helper it's about time yeah where you been huh <laughs> we're going back we're going back to the shop and we're going to take a look at something else okay so looking on the wall uh, this is what you'd have and I'll just give you an example there's your board and this will say this is the next board coming over you're gonna leave a gap the gaps gonna look like a half inch it's gonna look like that and your batten is gonna look like this now what we're what we're doing here is uh, just showing you what the wall would look like with the two boards and how the batten would go over top like this and again you can see why you're not going to be nailing the center because behind this is going to be the uh, insulating uh, foam and the, the you know, you know the uh, zip or whatever it is you have strips up so you, your center nail isn't going to do any good you're just going to hit nothing so you want to hit this side or this side and technically you want to be on a, uh, an angle using nails is is okay because the nails have held for about 30 years they are coming out and i'll show you why they come out so so here's uh, some of the nails that were used and they're actually technically almost too long but they used uh, about a two inch nail and they come in technically on an angle like that probably just off the center and come in like that on an angle and hit into the meat of the this next board here and the same thing with this they would go on this now they would stagger it uh, about every 12 inches or so you'd have a nail what happens over time is the wood uh, shrinks and gets tight around the nail and that's fine but then it swells when it swells at that point it loosens off and pushes on the head of the nail then it gets tight again then it swells pushes on the nail again eventually what you have is a nail that might be hanging out like in this case this far because you can see the paint and everything where it was painted from the nail being pushed out over the years uh, but for 30 years I'd say that's still a pretty good deal because that nail has really held up now big warning here if you decide to use screws like I'm using because you're repairing or something absolutely pre-drill every hole before you drive a screw in because this stuff will split pretty easily with a screw and uh, I'm using a weatherized deck screw kind of expensive but you know cost more than nails but it'll hold down and I think over time it should hold better because screws are like a ring shank they don't have a tendency to back out so as it swells it won't be able to push the screw where this will over time slowly get pushed out and what you could do is run around with a hammer one afternoon and spend nothing but uh, I guess time hammering all the nails back in if uh, <clears throat> if you're into that kind of hobby I'm not uh, I like the screws a lot better also the screws can be removed in the future once you get the paint away from the head and therefore remove parts that are bad such as a, a bad piece or something and, and replace it uh, this is uh, again another piece here where you can see the rot has come in off of the uh, to the bottom of it and started to eat up through it's pretty sh I'm pretty sure by looking just looking at it uh, you can see that it wasn't sealed they should have sealed every bottom of every piece top and bottom before it was nailed in so this again was soft enough and it was starting to rot so again just cut it off and you know remove it this is just uh, some of the uh, caulking that the contractor used and again if this is done right minimal caulking should be able to seal on each side of each of these battens sounds like a lot of work it is but look at the strength of that siding you're putting up you know three quarter inch solid 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 piece of lumber so I do I, you know board board and batten is is a very good siding but uh, don't kid yourself it's not cheap there are ways to do it cheap such as with the plywoods and, and other types of uh, lumber it has been done in the past the western red cedar is probably one of the more expensive ones that I certainly know of 
and then of course you could always look at the uh, the new hardy board or something like that i suppose but this is classic 30 year old uh borden and batten siding and this is this is actually the smooth side up i did that wrong there we go there <laughs> there's the rough side up where it's really rough and again like i said that will hold the weather so and then if your gap is too big, you're going to see that you're going to have a problem trying to nail this in. So ideally, you want to keep your gap down to around a quarter of an inch. And that way you have lots of meat on both sides that are going to drive your nail or your, if you're using a nail hammer or in, if you know, like I said, if you're using a screw, you want to be able to get from just off center and on an angle to hit each board all the way up. So, hey, board and batten. So there you go guys. Thank you for watching Coffee and Tools this week again. Uh, and what we covered today was board and batten work. The, the big thing is, is just remember that you, if you're going to use screws instead of nails to drill those darn holes out first because if you split this thing you will not be happy with yourself. <laughs> Have a great week guys. All right.